a couple of months ago, we told everybody about, oh, that's yours. We told everybody about a situation with the ACOG, American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, where they had issued what they called Policy 385, which would compel every physician in America to either perform elective abortions or make an arrangement, a referral arrangement with someone who they would, could refer women to to have elective abortions. This thing is so radical that if you read the, the way the text is written, as I said at that time when we, when we first revealed it, this policy 385 would basically say that a physician commits malpractice even if the woman wants to be pregnant, is trying to get pregnant, and is happy to be pregnant if, you, if he does not tell her that one of her options is, is uh, elective termination. This is, this is outrageous, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to, to plug the hole that they've got in the abortion clinics because these, these death camps are shutting down because they can't hire anybody. Right. That's the primary reason that these abortion mills shut down. And so ACOG is trying, is, which is one of the most radically pro-abortion groups in America, right along with the American Medical Association, they're trying to force people into participating in abortion because if they don't, they're, they're losing their business. Well, anyway, we vowed to, uh, to do something about this, and recently um, we mailed one of these postcards, that, one of what we're calling a contract killer postcard, to every OBGYN's office in the United States. Uh, we, our donors provided us the funds that we needed to, to uh, accomplish this project. It's pretty expensive, as you can imagine. But um, we printed this postcard. We've had incredibly good response from this. Um, and we know that by how angry the pro aborts that have received it have gotten and the threats and the calls and the, all the nonsense that we've gotten here and the threatening mail and all that sort of thing. But the other thing is ACOG recently held their national convention in New Orleans. And a couple of our good friends, uh, Matt Truella and Dan Holman uh, from Missionaries to the Preborn, had decided that they would go to this convention and uh, they had contacted us or Matt had contacted me and we also produced another little brochure that's similar to the, to the postcard, has basically the same information in it. And uh, I gave them several thousand of these to, um, we donated them to, to missionaries to the preborn for them to hand out and they went there and had some very good experiences from what I can tell and uh, Matt, we understand you're here with us. Yes, I am. Glad thank, to be here. Thank you for being with us. And also, Dan, you're here with us. Yeah. Good morning. I want to thank both of you for coming on this early in the morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. First, Matt, tell us um, what your experience was with handing out the, the brochures and with all the other things that went on there. Well, handing them out to the people, um, the vast majority of physicians <laughs> were indifferent. You know, they didn't want to get involved. And um, that's probably one of the biggest problems. Uh, what, why ACOG is what it is. We had several physicians tell us that they, um, the reason they have a pro-abortion position in their platform as an organization is because there's a small feminist minority that's in leadership. And, you know, we had lots of physicians come up to us who quietly, while they're looking around nervously, tell us that we're pro-life and thank you for being here. And then they would tell us how that you know, it's run by a small feminist minority. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why don't you guys do something and get rid of the small feminist minority and mm -hmm. get a pro-life platform in there? Because this is huge. This affects public policy across the nation. Absolutely. ACOG sends out agents all over the country to state legislatures to push pro-abortion legislation. They work hand in glove with Planned Parenthood. If you read this opinion 385, um, it's just Planned Parenthood pro-abortion rhetoric um, to the core. Well, I and suspect, people, Matt, when I, when I first saw it, my sus first suspicion was that ACOG probably contacted either the National Abortion Federation or Planned Parenthood and said, help us draft this proposal. Because uh, this, this reads like it came right out of Planned Parenthood's manual. Right. I agree 1,000%. When I was reading it, I was like, they sat down together and wrote this thing up. Right. It's that same. That's that, similar to yeah. their, their language and the things they're pushing in the legislative arena. Right. And, and I'm so, not asking the obvious, but is it Planned Parenthood that will benefit from forcing uh, sure. OBGYNs to do this? Sure. Okay. And you remember a few years ago, we talked about this when we originally talked about this ACOG thing, when the ACGME, which is the organization that accredits medical schools, issued a similar policy like this, saying all medical students would be forced to take a rotation at an abortion clinic, specifically a Planned Parenthood abortion clinic before they'd be allowed to graduate from medical school. 
And we did the same type of direct mail program against them that we're now doing against ACOG. And it was very successful, and they backed away. And I'm, and I'm convinced that ACOG's going to back away from this. Yeah, they're already reconsidering it and because uh, they're getting a lot of heat from it. Right. And we did talk to several physicians, myself personally, who, um, boy, they were using colorful language. They were very adamant that there's no way they're going to comply with this, even if it does become a rule. And um, so that was kind of good to see. But, um, yeah, and, you know, the reason they're bringing it, Mark, is because I talked to one elderly physician there. Um, she said, you know, she's been coming to ACOG for years, and she said, I an encouraging note for you guys, just so you know, every year I come here, uh, you realize fewer and fewer physicians do abortions. Right. And that made perfect sense to me why they're pushing Opinion 385. Absolutely. You have less doctors doing it, so hey, let's force the majority who don't do it to help the few who do do it by sending the women over to them. That's right. Well, Dan, what kind of uh, experiences did you have at, at the event? Well, mostly the same, and I like to connect this with, you know, your last story, you know, you wondered why, you know, one guy could cut, reap so much havoc, and uh, and I wonder where uh, the Christians were, you know, on campus, and the pro-lifers, you know, on campus, how come they didn't stop this one guy? And it's like that with ACOG, you have a small uh, um, uh, feminist uh, minority, you know, that's pushing this agenda, and yet where are the pro-life doctors, where are the Christians, you know, why aren't they taking a more uh, uh, overt stand, you know, against this? And um, I have um, a view of, uh, of ACOG as just being a wicked baby-killing organization. They promote abortion because of the fact that they make money off of abortion. And by virtue of, their, of, of, of the membership, uh, they all are abortionists because of the fact that they belong to a baby-killing organization. Absolutely. If I belong to the Ku Klux Klan, and I said I'm not I'm personally against hanging blacks or, or, or the Klan's treatment of blacks, that wouldn't exonerate me from uh, what you know, that organization does. It wouldn't be any defense for you, much less exonerate you. Right. Especially if you still attended their meetings, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm paying their dues, you know, patting, uh, pat, patting the guys that do hang the people, you know, on the back, you know, calling them doctor. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lending them my reputation by, by being there. You're exactly you know, besides right. Besides giving them my money. You're exactly right. Does, well, does, well, I'm sorry. Does ahead. anybody have any speculation on why these pro-life doctors that were glad they were here we're so, you know, hush-hush about it. Well, why? I'll tell you why. Because they get shouted down in any environment like this where they speak up. It's that, cowardness. It's in a cowardly. Word. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, you know, and I've been out there uh, with, with these folks, and i got to commend uh, missionaries to pre warn because this is, what, the fifth or sixth year they've attended yeah, these uh, ACOG conventions, and I've been out there from time to time. But there is an organization within the ACOG, and they call themselves APLOG, American Pro-Life OBGYNs. Right. And that number is getting stronger. Right. Yeah. And as I said, the numbers of abortionists are getting less. But it's such an incredible street witness because there are literally thousands upon thousands of, of, of doctors that are going in to this convention every single, every single time Absolutely. they meet. So it's a, it's a great witness. Well, listen, Matt and Dan, I want to uh, say I appreciate you guys handing out the brochures that we gave you down there. And, uh, hey, thanks so much. And, uh, you know, we're all in this together. So, and, you know, anything else we can do like that, you, you be sure and let us know because... Um, a little bit of printing and, you know, that kind of thing is pretty cheap uh, for what the reward is in, in the end right. of this deal. That's right. It takes a small effort. We yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you a lot. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.